Hello, Balance Nation. It's Dr. Anthony G. Beck, and as promised, this is a response video. Uh, one of the benefits of being in Balance Nation is you get to ask your questions, and I will give you the best answers that I can possibly issue. Now, I'm always going to give you both sides of the story, so that way we can always come up with what we refer to as the balanced understanding, because out there in today's age, there's a lot of noise and confusion in the info space. You hear me talk about that all the time. But in reply to um, uh, Nadia's question, in regards to ulcerative colitis, here's some of the things I'd like you to understand. Well, first of all, there's a lot of information out there uh, on the internet about ulcerative colitis. You have one side of the fence, of course, being traditional, conventional medicine approach, which we're going to get into just a little bit. And then, of course, you, then you have all the holistic and alternative and all those other catchphrases. Well, one of the things before I ever talk about any name it, blame it, tame it game disease is to have you think for just a minute what's in a name. So when we take a look at the words ulcerative colitis, all that really defines out is the fact that you have inflamed ulcers in the colon. So when we start thinking about disease as independent entities in which we struggle with, we have to remember they just are given a name so that way we can truncate down our approach to correcting them to focusing on that disease. Well, one of the big things that you guys know I'm famous for is, is telling people that you have to recognize every person as a category of one and understand that they all have a biochemical individuality and a genetic uniqueness. So in science or medicine today, we oftentimes will hear people talking about, well, we don't know the exact cause for disease X, Y, or Z in this case, UC or ulcerative colitis. Well, the problem with that is, is that's because medicine is not designed to look for root causation when it comes to disease. Why? Because today, most people think of the scientific method, if you will, as getting one particular variable and adding or subtracting that in a controlled situation and then studying what happens. Well, as we can all testify to is the fact that we're way more complicated than that. So um, at the end of the day, you have to realize that the body is a unique, super complex organ system. So we refer to that in, uh, in functional medicine as systems biology and the interconnectivity of systems. So I'm kind of alluding to where you most likely are going to think I'm going to go when it comes to there are some causations when it comes to ulcerative colitis. But one of the things about it is, is uh, just to describe this just a little bit differently so everybody kind of understands is that ulcerative colitis is basically ulcers that are inflamed located in the colon. Not to be uh, confused with Crohn's disease, which can be that same type of inflammation through the entire GI tract, what we call down south the hooter to the tutor. So basically what's happening is the immune system is uh, making a mistake that certain things like food or other material is an invading substance. Now what do we just find out there? Well. Things that are going through your inner tube absolutely unequivocally have an impact and contribution to causation of this inflammation. Okay, so at the end of the day, when you are thinking about things like these terms, I want you to think about them as a situation that has multifaceted uh, contributors to why it's manifesting in you. And so that's why some people can eat certain foods and they don't have a problem, whereas some people can eat certain foods and they will have a problem. Why? Well, that's because of their own unique recipe, their own symphony and how it all comes together. Now, we throw around all these terms and then we talk, start talking about, well, IBD and IBS. Well, irritable bowel disease is a general term that has underneath it things like Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, uh, celiac, and that kind of fun stuff. Not to be mistaken with IBS, which is basically inflammatory bowel syndrome, um, not to get into all the specifics of that, but when something is in a disease state or IBD, that means it's kind of progressed and is definitely having some degradation to the tissue and affecting systems and things like that. Well, the actual approach uh, in conventional care today for UC is to first, you know, try to give the patient, you know, you talk to your primary care provider and it's like, well, here, if you got runny stool, take some Imodium. Um, if you got some pain, here, take a, an NSAID. Well, that's over-the-counter drugs approach. But then what they'll do is they'll kind of move on to some of these things called amino salicylates or salicylates, however you want to, uh, you know, inflect your, your Latin there. But the thing is, is then oftentimes that's not going to be correcting what's really causing it and it's just going to be treating it again. Are they effective? Well, absolutely, they definitely work. Then oftentimes what happens is, is the, the disease state and the non-attention to what the causative factors are 
progress and now we have to now start shutting down uh, immuno response even further with corticosteroids and immunomodulators. Now then sometimes we'll actually we even want to just completely suppress the immune system with certain biologics. But at the end of the day, none of those are really needed if you can identify the causations or the things that are contributing to this state of ulcerative colitis. So I've always said, according to Balanced Protocols 2358 framework, the five stands for the five causes of disease for anything that is plaguing you or mankind, which are nutritional deficiencies, stressors, microbes, allergens, or toxins. And generally, it's not just one of those, it's multiple of those offending agents coming together in your unique chemistry. Now, don't forget, when there's something that's a term that most people have never heard of or even really talked about there, which is actually called our exposome. You can actually, you know, Dr. Google that. And basically, the exposome is a totalitary uh, view of all the things that come into your environmental inputs, right? So we know that emotions can get you so upset that you can lose your bowels, right? You'll, 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 you'll get so upset or nervous about, I don't know, talking in front of a camera like this and your bowels get loose. Or, you know, we, we know that, you know, women can also oftentimes say that, you know, you get so worried you missed your period, you miss your period. So the mind has a physiological response. And so if you're under a tremendous amount of stressors, not just psychological stress, but physiological stress from things like electromagnetic fields and sound and light, and things in your air, things in your water, all these things that make environmental inputs that are coming into your system, if they're not healthful, of course they're gonna to contribute to the overall resiliency of the body. So you have those things coming through, then you have foods that are coming in based upon your choice, and then what ends up happening is, is they come into a weakened state. If you're putting in things like other drugs and, and alcohol and refined foods and trans fats and things we absolutely know degrade the actual lining, those, those cells that are going through your inner tube, then you have these other stressors and microbes come in, well of course they're going to affect it. So to say that food and the things that we consume are not contributory factors to an inflammatory condition like ulcerative colitis is really just not logical. So that balanced understanding is, is of course, everything that comes into your body is going to be a part of your unique story, okay? So we talk about genes these days, and this is the last thing I wanna kinda of impress upon you, because I don't want anybody to subscribe to the ideal Conventional medicine that goes back to something called central dogma of, you know, body making proteins, these make DNA. And you're basically a, a ticking time bomb of disease where if it runs in the family that you're going to get it too. Well, what I, you know, we don't see people doing is, is what we tend to see, you know, well, hey, breast cancer runs in your family. Let's prophylactically remove your breasts. Well, if ulcerative colitis, you know, runs in your family, let's just start chopping out colons. Well, it's kind of silly to start doing that. So what I don't want you to do is focus on genes or genetics or that if somebody in your family had it, you'll have it. Why? Because that might be your genotype, but something more specific that we understand more about today is our phenotype. But basically, is how our genes are affected by all those things I just talked about. So then we actually have some of the things, these other terms like epigenetics and the other things that we're learning to be able to recognize that we can turn on and off certain genetic responses by pharmaceutical medications, nutraceuticals, and dietary items, right? We can also do this with, with mindful breathing and, and relaxation and meditation and prayer. So what this all testifies to, I'm kind of a little long-winded here, is the fact that yes, everything that you have coming into your environmental inputs is ultimately going to affect all the tissues of your body. Where it's going to manifest in disease is where your weakest link is. So the take home here is if you've been diagnosed with a little name it, blame it, tame it game of ulcerative colitis, what you want to do is you want to seek some of those root causations. And we can simply test for those kind of things. We have stool samples to where we can DNA sequence your entire microbiome. We can screen for pathogenic bacteria. We can assess how much good bacteria you're taking. Because I know there's a, a lot of people out there doing yogurts and probiotics and fermented foods, which I absolutely love. But at the end of the day, if you haven't quantified you and your terrain, you're just throwing handfuls of darts at the dartboard, hoping one will stick, much less get a bullseye. So if you really want to get down and, and, and dirty into the hooter to the tutor science and why it might be manifesting in you, you need to do some functional labs. We have some things and markers today that are advanced ways of looking at 
what is actually uh, manifesting in you, things like acenophil protein X, calprotectin, uh, screening for those bugs and things like that. But keep in mind, that's just thinking in the colon. Remember, environmental toxins, those things coming into your tissues, suppressing the immune system, which is 70% located in your, in your bowels, right? So we have to think about that. We also have to think about, you know, the world that we live in when it comes to exposure to you know, not only these microbes but allergens, heavy metals, all those things come into the body, create a weakened system, and will manifest in different disease states based upon your unique recipe. So anyhow, I hope this uh, has been uh, helpful to you. Nadia, thank you so much for asking the question. And hey, what I want to do is invite everybody to, um, you know, definitely issue questions to me. Um, sometimes I'll be longer winded. Sometimes they'll be short. But what I really want to do is help you guys have a balanced understanding and really realize that there is a way to silence the noise and confusion that's out there by just realistically understanding you know, what things are making you uniquely you. You are a one of a kind, you write your story, but you need to become your own autobiographer. And how you do that is finding out what is going on in your biological terrain. Don't get stuck in just looking at your genes, which is really popular out there today. Those genes are manifest and turn on or off, influenced, suppressed or activated. There's good and there's not so good based upon what you're putting in through your environmental inputs. So um, again, I hope this makes sense to you guys and I look forward to answering some more of your questions. This is just gonna go for Balance Nation. So if you wanna share it, please feel free to do so. Uh, but hey, at the end of the day, remember, let's live life in balance.